That is what the heroes are going to be in hey this yo. upcoming game. The draft is on. We have the Nyx Assassin band out because we saw how good RTK was on that one yesterday. Oh. And uh, they even respect that Meepo in the first phase uh, by BGJ there as well. But uh, it's on. It is on. If you did miss yesterday, that Nyx Assassin was probably one of the best Nyx I have seen in recent memory. Just an absolute monster coming out for that team. So really do not... Expect him to ever make it through the ban process there, Jack. It's an interesting draft philosophy here from DC. The Ember Spirit Warlock DC coming as the first two picks. They've been real comfortable heroes for VGJ, so almost maybe the philosophy of let's take away their better heroes, especially the Ember Spirit uh, with Freeze. And then, of course, the starter most likely being played by FY here on VGJ. He's uh, back to that kind of roaming four position with Fenrir willing to step into that more of a protecting role, Ten the lane support, the defensive kind of five sacrificial role. And so see if FY can uh, have some good performances on this hero. Even though he's been roaming, it feels like this FY we see nowadays is not the greedy FY we saw like two or three years ago. It's, he's a lot more selfless. I mean, playing here is like Slider, you can't really be greedy. You don't get a lot of farm, but it does feel like a, a different FY. All right. Well, we got some wings coming out here. Uh, some wings from the Ember Spirit. It's a flying Ember, as I like to call it. Sorry. Out in the arena, I believe a wings player was seen, and they went yes. absolutely bananas. So, and he gave he gave out he gave away goodies. Goodies, huh? yes, wonderful goodies. All right, <laughs> the land experience. Yeah. So, uh, I want to talk to you about um, this uh, pair up with the jug and the slardar, if you don't mind. Uh, usually, we see kind of a more like insta pick on a dazzle, a life stealer pairing up with that slardar. Somebody that is a real combo with him. Uh, jug first pick. Less all in, like it's not as one dimensional. You go Slada Life Sealer or like a Slada PA type thing, it's like all single target, very one dimensional what you're trying to do. A hero that isn't going to scale well can get kited quite hard later on. Whereas Jug, you've got, you can five man push with Healing Ward, you've got a good ultimate in Omni Slash, you've got some magic damage from the Blade Fury. It's just all around, more well around here. And I think the other big thing, we've seen uh, TNC use Jug. It's a hero that beats Ember mid 1v1. <laughs> this is the like counter pick to the Ember if you want to run a mid lane. Yeah, that's, that's a great point, guys. I think that's the most likely use for him there. And also, you, there's other hidden utility as well. Healing Ward, say, up against uh, Fatal Bonds or something like that in a bigger team fight where you have that spread AoE coming out, the Ember Spirit as well. And uh, so most likely, I would expect the Juggernaut to go mid for aggressive. Obviously, this used to be one of his uh, more popular, famous heroes, but maybe something more that he's been accustomed to this patch. The Ursa, we've seen a lot being picked up by aggressive. You like the Ursa? They lost like both that. games with it. Ursa? I think they've gotten a little too comfortable with it, and it's become a bit predictable. Other teams have been starting figuring out how to beat it. And also aggressive when Ooh. he plays very much to his name, right? He loves to just get in your face and fight. The thing with Ursa is the tempo is sometimes there's a difference between them and their mid. There was a couple fights yesterday where he was going in as Ursa and it was like full tilt, oh, we're going to come fight. And the Shadow Fiend was like, I don't know. I don't know about the position for this. It didn't really work out for them. And they've been using the Underlord as well, one of the ROTK's more popular heroes in this patch as well, to kind of complement that where they want to take these like early mid-game team fights and finish the game fairly early. I'm so happy Underlord got banned though because even though I knew <laughs> that RTK was going to be the Underlord player to look out for. I was not impressed yesterday. It seemed like they just couldn't be as aggressive as they wanted to be in the early stages of the game, and that just made Underlord look poop. You were straight up flaming yesterday. Don't you unimpress, Sheever. You flamed him. I was unimpressed. <laughs> DC were impressed, though, because they banned it out. They though. banned it out, they and I'm impressed. so happy. <laughs> Good for them. All right, we haven't talked about the Putka pick yet. Fudge being picked up from DC. Uh, kind of a normal flavor we've been seeing in their uh, menu. Mizzou is playing Pudge before it was cool, I'd say, ah. as far as the full position Pudges go. Before all those like neutral pulls were happening, he was just happy to run a casual Pudge pick. So I remember an outstanding Misery Pudge at Genting. I forgot who it was against, but I, well, I don't know if it was against Wings or not, but this guy was just hitting every hook, and it was like, this guy's got a hook hack going or something. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I believe that was against Newbie, and that was like single-handedly mm. winning the tournament there. I mean, oh, yeah, it was disgusting. And so. there was something like he'd only picked it like like very rarely, like once or something in the previous <laughs> few years. Yeah. But uh, Pudge and Ember Spirit, I mean, as far as pubs go, these are the heroes that you see, I mean, especially <laughs> in China. This is like, for the Chinese right. players, must be a very familiar sight for them uh, on the ladder. This is first and second pick every nice. random draft rank game, basically. Yeah. Hey, I mean, There's that's the aggressive hero now. Oh, pick. interesting. Why not just lock that in last time? But I guess you're right. It gave them more options to think about what they were going to pick up. And They uh, valued the jug more, is kind of sure. what that says. Like, they really want the jug to be a counter pick to the Ember, and they're happy to forgo having a life seal. If life seal got banned, they'd be like, well, it's okay. We can substitute that for an Ursa. We saw the Slada Ursa in two games yesterday. So I think yep. they felt there was more flexibility with Aggressive's hero 
I mean, Freeze has flexibility as heroes, but they feel like this Jug pick is really good. I mean, it crushes Ember mid. It absolutely destroys the matchup. So, All right. so noob question for you then, gentlemen. Uh, Life Stealer to me seems like a pretty hero, good hero against Pudge. I mean, it eats up strength heroes, right? Can go through all that HP, but I guess Pudge can, you know, ult him, and then he doesn't get to get out of situations. Who wins that matchup? You think? You're right. It goes both ways. It goes both yeah, ways. It's, it's one of those. Uh, it's not like a clear cut. I think Life Stealer is slightly better off because even though you can dismember during rage, you're not killing him. Yeah, you waste the rage, but typically you want to use that dismember to actually get a kill during that that duration. And okay. It, Pudge is in the front lines dismembering someone, you're not killing that hero. Once that dismember wears off, Life Steal's gonna kill you. Mm -hmm. He's gonna go on a rampage, especially with that armor reduction. And then I like the Life Stealer yeah. pickup over the Ursa in this case. I feel like Ember Spirit and Warlock may be better heroes at kiting the Ursa, generally speaking. You saw some trouble with that yesterday as well, I believe, in, uh, in some of the matchups. And so, I like this Life Stealer pickup. And of course, the natural vehicle coming out from the Slardar. Yeah. With another one potentially in the off lane. I mean, we've just been seeing more and more of that teams valuing uh, mobility and the ability to move around the map, high vision. So Ursa's having some rough times. I don't think we'll be seeing him too much more in this tournament. I feel like a lot of teams would maybe consider putting Ember safe lane at this point, but I've never seen Rezo play the Ember Spirit just because the matchup is quite bad. And I feel like a lot of this draft from, I mean, VGJ have revealed like their overall game plan at this point. They haven't perhaps picked up their off lane depending on what Slada does. Um, but there's, to me, just there's good consideration towards getting a better mid matchup, a hero that can beat the Jug mid and give Ember the safe line. Beastmaster pick coming up. Shiver, you yeah. taught me about that yesterday. I like it, especially with the Pudge there too. You got that vision going. Pudge can get those hoops going. There's a lot of control. There's a lot of team fight on the side of DC, and I'm seeing a lot of fight on the side of VGJ, but not a lot of team fight. They can pick off hero, sure. As mentioned, Life Stealer with the Slardar, you got that. There you go. There's the team fight. There you go. Thank hello, you. Hello. And I really like this, actually, especially the Magnus Juggernaut. The crowd likes it, too, I think. <laughs> they, they love ROTK, I feel like. Yeah, he, he, is, he, um, he got the biggest cheer out of everybody. Yeah, he was just on there. Like, he got put on camera and like did like a little like smirk, and everyone was yeah. just like losing their shit up there. In, in a scene where, where so many players are you know, kind of very introverted, kind of you don't see that much of their personality and stuff, ROTK is the swashbuckling exception to that in many ways. <laughs> this guy's very outgoing, exp so expressive, and then over the years, some of the fans, if the fans don't like him, they'll say, you know, maybe this guy's a little bit past his prime, maybe he's not as sharp as he used to be, but the leadership and the expression is always there, and that's very important. We've seen a couple of teams recently, uh, most recently, actually, FY's former team, VGR where they needed somebody who was this vocal leader, and that's where Mikasa stepped in and filled in that role. ROTK certainly fills that role, and it's very important for teams that he's been on, and you, that's why you see immediate success often when he's there. Mm -hmm. it's iconic as well. So, can we talk about Magnus a little bit? I mean, I don't think he's been banned. I don't think he's been picked for the entirety of the tournament. And here he is, kind of that Ten sneaky little remaining. team fight. And we've seen the teams kind of valuing Dead even Tidehunter back. over that Magnus. Uh, any particular reason why he works in this game? Empowering Jug life, uh, and Life Sealer allows them to farm a lot faster, to do a lot more damage in a team fight. Uh, and, I mean, compared, the Tide would be nice because you get a mech buyer as well as like a maybe more reliable off laner and team fight presence. But the, the empower for the farming in the late game is something incredibly valuable for a hero. Like, like Jug mid can often fall off and not farm at like a very fast rate, but that's where the Magnus kind of makes up for that. Reserved. Don't have to build Battle Fury. That's right, free Battle Fury. There you go. Oh, those, st those stats were impressive. If you're only though, so you still get Battle Fury. <laughs> yeah, double Battle those Fury. Think about it. Doubles KDA and a godly win rate, 79%. 79%. With, yeah, that was... Uh, so he's got a great That's synergy with high. their heroes, and he also offers a... Often with Magnus, I think, for the most part, you don't necessarily want to be initiating unless you have a great follow-up. It's possible for, the, for them to do that here, but he also offers great counter-initiation. We mentioned some of the vision and the initiation that DC has right now. Magnus offers a great way to disturb that, kind of break that up. And you often have to be close to finish off some of VGJ's heroes, and Magnus kind of prevents you from yep. doing that. It becomes hard to take those teams. And they've already later. got initiation in Slada, so it's not like all in. Like, Magnus doesn't, exactly. want, doesn't need to and doesn't want to be starting the fight. You want the Slada life sealer to do that, Jug can follow it up. Magnus is almost like the the killing blow. Like, he comes in at the end once they're grouped up for that Ravage. He may be, uh, or for the uh, RP, he maybe even solo RPs in Ember. If Ember's a big problem here and you can get him in a solo RP and kill him, worth doing, so. Absolutely. Hey, oh, I Interesting. love that. Interesting. I think one of the problems maybe that VGJ is going to run into is that they got three extra melees next to the Magnus, so you got an RP, yeah. great. You screw everybody back, everybody fighting, and then you get something dropped on top of you by the by the Warlock, so that might be a bit of a problem there, but the Terrorblade to round it out for a digital chaos. Great against melee heroes, great against Life Sealer, like... You just, if you can't get on top of Terra Blade, he's going to kill you. And also very good yeah. against Slider Life Seal, one of the highest 
perhaps the highest Dama hero in the game or something. I don't, sure. I don't know exactly that. But he gets incredible agi. He can build stat items. He doesn't die to that Slada lifesteal duo. So. I want to hear it. Who do we favor? First game of this best of three elimination series. Oh, don't look at me. Jack well, knows I'm the best. Come on. Yeah, but that's why I, maybe you have to. I feel like we're talking a lot about VGR's, uh, v VGJ's drop, but I actually yes. like D DC with the Terrorblade pick. I feel like it rounds off very well. The Terrorblade with the Beastmaster aura. I think this Terrorblade is a fantastic pick. I'm going to side with DC on this. All right. Jack? It looked a little bit like uh, Wings Game 2 draft yesterday when they won the last pick Terrorblade as well. I feel like they have good ability to take towers. I feel like if they fight around this Terrorblade, obviously the Warlock offers great counter initiation as well and the Pudge. And so I think if they can control that tempo and not get too behind in lanes and be okay in team fights, I, I don't know. I think DC's in pretty good shape. I like their draft. Why do I always have to be this guy? I, I, I feel like uh, Magnus. Yeah. You don't have to. I, I don't have to, but I honestly you feel like, like Mag right. Magnus could be pretty good in this game. Uh, a nice grab on the Terrorblade to make sure they can't Sunder and a big amount of burst damage on that. I feel like they have enough control, even with Cask, to make sure that Terrorblade doesn't ball too much out of control. So call me crazy, but I'm feeling VGJ on this one. Well, we are going to find out what Merlini and Lyric will have to say about that because they will be the voices of this first game. It is over to them. Thank you very much, Shiver. Hello and welcome, everybody. We're here and in the game, VTJ facing off against DC, second series of the day. Merlini, how you feeling? Do you like the draft that we saw, that last pick, Terrorblade? Is it going to be enough? I like it. I will call Slex a little bit crazy. He, he told us to, after all. I mean, I, that, that's reasonable. It's an ROTK Magnus. Oh my the, god, the crowd, that crowd goes wild for ROTK. He is, he's just loved by everyone here. You know, it, the crowd hasn't been able to go wild for a lot of things. China teams have been struggling a little bit in this so far, but this could be one of those teams to watch. We, we saw them put up a pretty good performance yesterday. Uh, granted, they did end up losing the series, of course, but there were moments and highlights within it. So I'm very curious to see how they do. Uh, do you feel like this is a, a pretty even matchup in, in this game here? In terms of team skill? Yeah. I think DC has the upper hand uh, simply because of a couple of things. Wait, uh, ROTK going mid? Okay, oh, never he's mind. just blocking. He's okay. Uh, firstly, I think that the mid is uh, a big discrepancy. I think we is much more experienced than Freeze. And, you know, Jug's not the most difficult hero to play, but uh, I think he has a lot of room to grow as a player. Oh, he just is actually going to. Also popping in power onto him. So that's a nice little way to start this. Yeah, I would agree. He's tended to struggle, particularly in the early laning phase, was the big problems that he would have. Yep. That being said, Juggernaut versus Ember Spirit. How do you feel like this matchup fares for the Juggernaut just in general? Wasn't I casting with you when we had this exact same matchup? I feel like we might have been. I think so. Yeah. Ember has slightly less armor and he doesn't have the crit. So Juggernaut usually gets ahead in CS. My number is like 10 to 15% uh, CS favored for Juggernaut, but neither hero should die. But, you know, things things can happen. The thing about the Empower Level 1 is that you automatically know where the Magnus is because he would have to be in the middle lane already to cast it on him. And FY is going to be the surrogate off laner in this game. And he is having a little bit of a tough time versus Misery. However, Misery is out of region. And this, this, of course, does mean that ROTK is given a bit more of that farm priority, considering he would have a really rough time in the laning stage. Meanwhile, for DC, you got Moonmeander there, and, well, FY, maybe in a little bit of trouble. They're trying to chase him down. One more right click is going to be enough, and Resolution picks up that first blood. That is actually ROTK's weak point, though, I think, is actually his laning phase. So I think jungling with the Iron Talon this game and having FY go to offline to uh, soak up experience is uh, actually a little bit better for this scenario because if like Magnus doesn't get his items, he's just constantly gonna die to like Ember jumping on him, uh, Beastmaster scouting him out and whatnot. And Pudge, it looks like he's waiting for a two minute rune, praying for a regeneration and it is not well, there. it is a regen, but it's it a top. Regen. Yeah. Well, and this is another nice little thing here. You know, of course, denying to neutrals means you get that added respawn time. Not for Pudge, though. He can just keep on denying himself out for the low respawn. Come back to lane uh, and one of the, the few ways that you can still make that work. But Moon heading back home. Uh, do, do you sort of feel like the Magnus needs to get a lot done in this game? Or what's going to be Yo, sort of the, the big He's our big team of? fighter, man. So Slardar is going to be... You know, he's usually pretty important because you have that solar life still to come up. Magnus is the one that brings their team fight together. They have to deal with, he has to deal with like Rock. Rock is just like really annoying to deal with. And like sometimes Fatal Bonds can like catch the Magnus or something like that. Sometimes you think you're about to have a sick skewer and then you get rocked. 
and it, I think it's especially troublesome in this uh, game. And on top of that, uh, yeah, I don't. It's it's just their main team fight composition, and if they don't lock down the Terror Blade, uh, I think the panel mentioned that you know maybe they can keep them locked down with RP and Kaz, but they always have that rock to interrupt them, and I think that's a very potent combo. Not as potent as let's say like Dazzle Terror Blade, but still very strong and way stronger in a team fight. Oh, they're moving in now under resolution, able to hit the skewer. A couple more right clicks. He is getting a lot of heals in though. From you Sansa. see his armor, 13 yeah. armor right there next to the T1. This is why you pick him versus Slordar. Really good decision there. And, you know, you look at the rest of the lineup that you've got from DC2, and there's so many different ways to save people. Well, another one, of blue, the cast comes out, the right click's coming through as well, and Soxka is going to end up going down. So in spite of the high armor terribly, they just say, let's kill off the Warlock. Very nice positioning coming out from Fenrir, and Soxka was hugging the left side because it's kind of close to the tower, but it also just makes it very easy for them to jump from that blind spot, uh, and they just did not see Fenrir coming in at all. And Arlotiki's actually showed up the lane quite early as a mech. It looks like he is going for the energy booster in his quick buy as opposed to like a Treads Echo Saber build, which is, uh, you know, sometimes the way that you do want to take that Magnus. Yeah. And you see now as well, the fact that he's been able to get there and help out the laning stage a little bit compared to Moon Meander, who's focused more on just getting that farm up. He's going to need to make sure he does something pretty early on. And where do you feel like that first rotation is going to need to go in this game? For whom? For the Beastmaster. Beastmaster, probably gank Ember's lane, I think. I think Juggernaut is not invulnerable in this scenario. Oh, again, down bottom, that Maledic damage. The Skewer back as well. ROTK finds it. They're going to try and turn. See if he can kill off FY. He's going to be able to find that one. Also getting healed up, but not enough. Fatal Bonds is here as well. And now with Pudge, Misery looking for that hook, but there was a creep in the way. And well, still getting chased down. ROTK not long for this world as they are going to be able to run him down. But Rezo made the best out of that situation, dude. He knew he was going to die, but he still got the slaughter kill before he died, and he used that illusion to give vision for misery. So that was a quick and easy kill for them. And it looks like Vichy's getting a lot, uh, getting a lot done in this offline because ROTK is being really great with his skewers, but they are conceding a lot of kills in the meantime. And he talked a little bit about some of the problems that we've seen Freeze have. Giving him this good matchup means that you're leaving the rest of your team free to move around the map a lot more, make things happen. It does look like Slardar got a quick little glimpse of Moon, but it might be a bit scary for him to He was stick He was actually trying to go for the kill on Wii. We just shrined up and TP mid, and he wasn't able to stop his TP in time. And now that we have this bottle, he should be A-OK, -okay, although I don't know where Chicken is. No. Looks like it's still back in base for the moment. Uh, and you saw there as well Misery heading over towards mid, trying to find a hook onto the Juggernaut, but wasn't really able to find that angle. Freeze playing this well so far, and you take a look at the CS disparity, it's pretty heavily into the favor of VCJ. Uh, how, how concerned would you be right now if you're DC? I'm not terribly concerned. Resolution still getting his farm on. Uh, Magnus has been forced to leave the lane, so you know that he's not completely oh free farming. ROTK again getting very aggressive. Skewer Ooh. has already been used, but he does have another shockwave. Can throw it out there. Right click's coming through, diving deep for this one. They need to find the kill, but it's not going to happen. Sunders as well to heal up, so the Maledict can't take him down. That Great was a play. really fancy Quelling Blade play from him, too. That was, that was very smooth. Well, the Omni Slash gets used, and Misery trying to run back out and away is going to drop for it. But that's Omni down, and that means that the Terror Blade doesn't have a whole lot to fear right Dude, now. Dude, this bottom lane is just crazy. Oh, they have a Sentry Ward. Oh, uh, we spots Fenrir, ROTK there as well. They know that they're on him. They're trying to turn and get out, but Fenrir, no way to escape. I didn't think that they'd try and contest the Terror Blade so much. That's not something that you actually see very often. Uh, usually Terror Blade just gets free form, shifts over to jungle, and the support takes over the lane. So you're getting a lot out of the first 10 minutes from your safe lane as Terror Blade. And I do like this approach from them trying to shut them down early. However, it doesn't really seem like it's working out that well for them because Terror Blade is still number one on the network, and Warlock is level five and a half. That's actually very scary. All right, well, the top lane, Misery going to get gone on again. It does look like they have enough to take him down at the very least. We might be a little bit of a different story, and they jump inside of the creep, so... It doesn't look like they're going to be able to take the life stealer out of there. They need yeah. to use. They need to get something out of this meta, though. Like you can't just use meta and not get anything out of it. They have to pressure this tower. I think with the inner beast coming. I don't know what level it is on the beast master. It looks like he has gone for the zero four two, so it's a level two inner beast. 
Um, they're not going to actually get anything out of it. He does just back out again. Yeah, you know, it feels to me as if it's really been the Warlock pick that's helped them so much in this game. The heals, as well as that DOT and the Fatal Bonds have just been huge in these early skirmishes. Yeah, he's really strong versus this four melee line. Yeah, they have a little bit of magic immunity, but Fatal Bonds is just really devastating. And it also counteracts a lot of the uh, hurt from the Maledict that Fenrir has been trying to bring down the Terrorblade with. So, yeah, I do like this combination that they've been bringing. Almost level 6 on Soxa, but however, there is no more meta on Resolution. And it does look like they're backing, at least for the moment. Could be towards a smoke play, and yeah, it looks like that is what they're going to be going for. Moonmeander, roar up. Where's the kill? Yeah, they need to roar, get a kill, and then they'll get level 6 on Soxa, but... We is in deep in mid. FY knows that something funny is happening with how aggressively he's playing behind the tower. Uh, it looks like they're just going to use the smoke to transition right into the tower. And I mean, is there any way that they can try and push for more here, or do they just have to stop with the tier one? They know that they're way stronger right now because Warlock's level six, Moon Meander has his Helmet Dom, uh, which is really strong this early into the game. And they don't have level six on Saxa though. They, he might die. He's getting. He really just wants like one creep, but they also don't want this tower to be denied, but looks like they'll just have to let it go. Yeah, very unfortunate. So you do see we at least force back for a little while. They're kind of spreading out again to put themselves in a position to farm into the next set of items. Can you just kind of go from tower to tower like this, like clockwork with the DC lineup, or do they still sort of need to, to hold out a little bit against this VGJ side? I think you always just have to push out lanes, else the enemy gets too much. Like Magnus is farming his Blink Dagger peacefully in the side lane because so many heroes were on that top side. FY Fenrir and Aggressive smoked on the top side, but Moon's all the way on the left side of the tower, so it doesn't look like he's going to fall prey to this. Ooh! Almost a good one there for Misery. Tries to find himself an ROTK, but will come up with one. Looks like everybody just back to their spots. You know, we're talking a little, a lot about the Slardar Blink Dagger whenever he comes up and online. Uh, for you, do you feel like this Magnus needs to go for a farming build at all? Like, does he need to transition into that third big core, or I think can he just go utility? Jug and Life still eat up a lot of the map. So, because they can pressure so far in, because they have the magic immunity generally, although magic immunity not the best this game versus this member in the rock, but it is still uh, going to be pretty important for him to be able to initiate later on. I think if he goes for a farming build, they won't be able to fight because he's going to... Like, this is a game that you want Shadow Blade and a Blink Dagger on the Magnus so you can find the jump because without a good RP, I think they will just get crushed in team fights. Yeah. We saw there another kill go down onto ROTK. So uh, despite his early good start in the lane, has struggled a little bit at least towards finding things. Um, and it looks like pressure now down onto the tier one tower. Vichy yeah. like need to contest this at some point though, because they're not even forced to use the rock for these towers. And you mentioned, are they going to keep going from tower to tower to tower? If they don't contest, then they can just keep going to tower to tower because they always have that trump card of the rock. So they need to be able to take a fight even with the rock on DC side. Oh, and this is so great as well. The Hawk scouting the Life Stealer on the right side of the map. So they have the push at it. Well, all right, they get a little deny, not bad at all. But the, the, the Pudge also just makes this so scary. If Weehaw finds a Chains onto somebody, it's a quick pullback in and a kill. They drafted well against it, though, with the Spin and the Life Stealer. You don't actually care if you get hooked, because you can just do a lot of damage to the Pudge. If you're Life Stealer, you can just open wounds, Rage, start off the fight that way. And if you're Juggernaut, you can just simply spin away. So it's not the biggest deal in the, in the world. For someone like Magnus, it's a huge deal, but usually he's not out in front. Uh, so FY. two hours down already. It's it's getting to that point where DC are able to take towers. Yeah, both of them got denied, but they still got two towers, and they're still accruing net worth at a pretty decent clipping. Kind of wondering now as well, like what's the play for Vici J? You said contesting when they're moving up to try and take these with Metamorphosis. Magnus Blink is the, what you need. Okay. That was not very close. That's quite far away at the moment. Misery, in the meantime, has been able to get into a nice bit of farm for himself. Already the energy booster online. Imagine just going back for that Aether Lens next. Some people actually don't like Aether Lens that much on Pudge. Really? Yeah. It's like, it's 2,000 gold, and it doesn't actually give you that much survivability. It gives you a health regen and mana and 
cast range. But I, I think that this member on the with the Aether Lane's cast range is ridiculous. But at the same time, like getting Hood or a Blade Mill, you know, might actually save him when he otherwise would have died. But it just depends on what type of style you're playing with the Pudge. Either you're going to be in there taking a lot of damage with Hood and Blade Mill, or you're going to be fishing for hooks and letting your teammates go in and then keep fishing for hooks some more, which is where Aether Lens is much better. But, you know, because he does have the Ember Spirit on the scene, perhaps the uh, Aether Lens is going to be much better. Yeah, definitely. You also see here as well, just taking down the tower. That time they didn't even need to pop Metamorphosis. So yeah. this is looking really scary for VCJ if they just keep on going along the line. No Blink Dagger yet, only 50 gold away from ROTK. Yeah, he might. I think. Yeah, okay, he did get it from the tower. So it's about time for them to smoke. I, I mean, they've still lost four towers without using Rock once, without forcing out Rock once. So. And as you mentioned, without meta. So next fight they're going to take. Oh, here it goes. This could be a, a very bold engagement. It does look like they're missing, actually, the Warlock here. So uh, I imagine every from DC just backs off for the moment, gets set up. Uh, can you move now in towards, like, thinking about Roshan as well? Is that something that you can take on DC? That's usually what happens when you have the better team fight. You can just force Roshan. And they come to you like, well, we have better team fight. And they also have... Like the Warlock heal to sustain them in the Roche, and it looks like they are not going to wait. This could be a potential for a big RP. However, they just need eyes on ROTK. Where is that Hawk that they need? The Hawk is coming in, but it has not scouted out ROTK. They are indeed on the right side, and Terrorblade Illusion will be the first one to be scouted out by that Siege Creep. Also, the Night Vision giving a little bit less range than you would have otherwise had. When, well, I, I wonder if ROTK knows ward. he's there. <laughs> They, they have one here as well. It, they haven't dewarded this up on the hill yet, DC. So they decide to back out. Looks like they can just come back in again with Weeha laying down that remnant. Weeha's actually very poor. He has not even completed his veil yet. Oh. Life Stealer there to the side. You can see Misery peeing on him. He, he knows that keeping eyes on the Magnus is by far the most important thing in this in this fight. If they have an infested, empowered lifesteal inside of the Magnus and they hit an RP on like two heroes, especially the Warlock, they will get, they will just get demolished. Does he have Echo Saber yet? No, not quite, but he will have it really shortly. And that's one of those extra things where just the massive amount of burst damage will come out. Yeah, it's really tough for Magnus in this scenario though. Like, I cannot stress how difficult it is playing Magnus in this scenario. You have to do a lot of things. You have to keep in power on two heroes. You have to, you can't really farm that much because you don't have Echo Saber and you also have two cores that eat up a lot. You have to deal with the Hawk and you're the only team fight ultimate. There's no setup for the RP aside from himself. Maybe cast, but I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. not really great setup. Yeah, definitely. You know, another thing to mention now is you do have this Slardar who's going to be able to pick up a Blink Dagger. That might be that extra little bit of initiation where you can allow the fight to develop a little bit with a pickoff coming from the Mag Life Stealer or the Slardar yeah. Life Stealer combo. But if you, let's say you hit three heroes with the Slardar Crush and you get three hero RP and then you get rocked with the two man Fatal Bonds, you're probably going to lose the fight miserably. Yeah. Because then they'll, they'll get the Sunder off too. And they're almost always going to have the Terror Blade out in front as one of the heroes that gets RP'd because they want them to go on him so they can save him with a rock. And you can see as well the itemization that you're getting right now from Moonmander going back for the Vlads after the Helm of the Dominator, just all aura all the time. And here might be that moment this that we're talking it. about. Yeah. Well, they didn't actually precast some power on Lifestealer, which I think is very important because he does have the Echo Saber, so you're just doing a ton of damage. Misery, yeah, that's not the target that you want. You see him, but you know that that's not the best. Well, they're going to jump out and go on to him. A quick kill, and that's a free one. So they'll take that. Don't really uh, throw out too many of the big ultis, obviously, to make the use of that. Smoke's... It, it's, I actually don't think it's worth it, though. A, a smoke is very important. In, in this sort of game. And blowing a smoke for a kill, especially if you don't get the tower off of it, is very, very bad. So they all get hook, hook, hit by Fatal Bonds, and now Magnus can't blink for a good, you know, 20 seconds. So that's that's the fight right there. Jeez. Yep. Well, and they pop Metamorphosis right as well at the start of this one. So I guess that they're going to need to pressure down the Tier 2 tower in the mid lane off the back of this, or can they go back they, to Roche? I think you definitely go for Roche here. Uh, so Warlock actually went for a 4-2-0 build, and I think he knows how important the Fatal Bonds is in this game. The cooldown is reduced, so it's 18 seconds cooldown, 25 second up, uh, up time for that, and hitting a Fatal Bonds is as good as like a Shadow Strike, for example, if you're Queen of Pain. You're always looking to get on the Magnus so he cannot blink in the fight. If you get a Fatal Bonds on him early in the fight, 
Uh-oh. Well, moving in. They're able to pull the hook back in. Weeha kills off the slaughter on the other side, and they've been able to control out and possibly bring down aggressive. Stun for days, and will infest inside of a creep. Okay. They're going to get out of there for the moment, and that might be his ticket away. Yeah, they just did not have enough burst, just not enough uh, enough damage. I don't know where Moon's Helmet Dominator Creep, maybe that extra little bit from like a Alpha Wolf or a little bit extra sun from a Centaur would have helped him out. But at the same time, sometimes it's a double edged sword bringing a Helmet Dominator Creep into the fight because you can just give him a free place to go in. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> that was pretty close was right there. Close. And Misery going to walk right past Fenrir. Need to be careful here, buddy. They are going to come in with the Terrorblade as well. Well, maybe going to be able to get a good initiation. The RP, but there's the Rock for the counterplay. Fatal Bonds on it too. Is it going to be enough? The Slardar Crush, and they kill him off. So two go down for DC. Vichy J looking strong, and now Moon Meander as well going to be turned upon here, but looks like they're not going to chase too much further. That was pretty good for them. However, F that, yeah, they actually uh, had Fenrir back there really, really quickly. Hmm. Anyways, that was uh -huh. a very good RP from him. Oh, crush, right clicks, Moon needs to be careful. They find that kill as well, dominating for aggressive. That Echo Slaver armlet combination, he's just With got power. Burst. With Empower, he hits for what, like 200, and he has a ton of minus armor, especially because the amp on a hero is just. They are going to get destroyed. And I think now the Weeha? Oh my god. That's a scary moment. Uh, another crush now. Misery needs to be careful. Skewered back. They're going to find that kill. These heroes just melt to this minus armor. And no one's really tanky enough to get in there at the start of the fight. They don't quite have the Manta on the Terror Blade, which certainly would have helped. But the fights have just been very, very scrappy, which has been favoring Vichy by far. Because you're just able to get like every time like amp blink crush are up, boom, you go in and get a kill, and then you just repeat that every like 12, 12, 15 seconds, which is kind of just uh, what they did right there. And these are some very squishy targets, like like the Pudge. You know, he doesn't have that much armor and he has a ton of HP, so he's the ideal target for a life stealer. Yeah, this is feeling to me like the momentum is just so heavily switched. Just a moment ago, we are talking about taking Roshan, being able to tear down all these tier two towers, and the, the five-man group up team fight potential from this Vichy Gabe squad has been really rough to deal with. Weeha maybe in a little bit of trouble as well. Skewer down, and he is out of there. They pull in the life stealer, but like you said, just rage and fight some more. It looks like DC not really having the answers now, and Sox got left completely alone, trying to walk back out in a way he's just going to be brought down as well. Uh, Omni Slash now down as well under Resolution. Doesn't get the Sunder off. Freeze with the double kill from bad to worse. DC do not have a response. Oh, they might lose a gem right here. That would be, oh my Moon Meander, god. Moonmeander, nowhere to go. Roar is down, trying to get away, but ROT has He pushes him to the low ground. He is going to be able to DP out. They kick it on top of him. No, they do find the stun. The right clicks, and there's the kill. Gem of True Sight dropped here. That is your worst nightmare if you're a DC fan. Five heroes dead, tower dead, gem down, Roshan slain. That is rough. I think um, they just haven't really been fighting together at all. I think like they haven't been really doing a good job of disrupting the slaughter and the and the Magnus. They've been getting free blinks off. Warlock can't get a fatal body. Like if he runs in, he's gonna die. And I think that's kind of where the Ember Spirit needs to be able to jump in there. But he's kind of been trying to recover in terms of his farm. He was, I believe, like sixth in net worth not so long ago. Now he's number five and he just picked up his blink and veil and you just have to be able to stop these heroes from jumping on your weak heroes that Life Sealer just loves to eat up alive. Yeah, and normally we'd be able to see something like a, a, a very defensive hero out of DC. You think about like a Dazzle, for instance, maybe to help stem the, the, the damage that's coming out, save somebody at the last second. You take a look at those net worth graphs. Oh, God, it's just these items. A disaster. That's two Midas's one on Witch Doctor, one on the Life Stealer, or sorry, one on the Slaughter, and you have the AC completed onto the Life Stealer, which is quite crazy, but he did skip the Desolator, so that's actually kind of useful for him. But. Yeah, he is hitting insanely hard right now and is just I mean, with empower it's just completely different yeah, and it sort of begs the question what's going to be your catch-up potential if they're beating you now with these midases and everything else it does look like the smoke in towards the mid lane moon meander is there as well as misery and now fy going to come back in this could be a huge blow if they manage to find somebody from dc Yep, just waiting for the big RP, ROTK smoke onto the low ground it might pop in just a second but he doesn't actually want it to pop right now 
Freeze can do this. No fear of really any repercussion because of the counter initiation play. And who do you hook right now? You can't hook either of those two. Lifesteal has Aegis and he has Rage, and then Juggernaut also has the Spin. And they don't actually have a good way to disable them after the hook. Sometimes you want like an instant disable, like Rubik Lift, for example, or like a Lion Hex, like as they're getting hooked so you can actually kill them. But in this situation, you'd have to roar them while they're like sliding from the hook or dismember immediately, which is not super reliable. Or maybe drop the rock, but then you're committing a lot just for a potential hook kill. So like their combination isn't that great. Well, they're now going to be able to find FYI. They pull him back in with Misery, and that will be a kill. So at least something going well there for DC. And this feels to be uh, the way I they have to play. I think he had the gem, right? I'm, I'm pretty certain he did have the gem. OK, yeah, yeah Punch does have yeah, it Yeah, so they got the gem back. So that's very nice from him, for them. So this sort of begs the question, is this the way they have to take these team fights from now on, just like find pickoffs until they get to some massive net worth ahead of them? No, they can still team fight. They just need to be able to jump the important heroes. Like they need to be able to deal with the Juggernaut and Life Stealer or limit their damage output while they make sure that Mag doesn't get a good RP off or the Slar. The Magnus and the Slar are the most important heroes to kill. Like Witch Doctor, like you know, if he ults, you can just rock him and drop Fatal Bonds. He's gonna die from a lot of side damage. But it's mostly the Slaughter and the Magnus who will be able to control the fight. And even limiting the Empower cast from ROTK by killing him is very important. Yeah. Um, maybe Vision also going to be one of those things where you can keep the eyes on ROTK like we were talking about in that top fight. So Beastmaster need to make sure those Hawks are spread out all around the map. And as you said, the gem going to make a pretty big difference for how this works out now. Magnus almost has Shadow Blade, though. He's 500 gold away from having a Shadow Blade. So like the, the Hawk is not very reliable anymore. And they use, they use smokes in between his blink and the Shadow Blade, which is very important for them to make sure that he gets that one or good, two good RPs off that he needs to get into this point in the game. Well, despite what some people are saying, Vichy J feeling like a very strong team right now. I was sort of uh, not expecting them to come out of the gates this good, but after a little bit of a rough laning phase, they've been able to persevere. And now well, Moon Meander sort of in an area where he could try and do something to freeze, but feels like it'd be tough. Is Necrobook just gone completely at this point it's for too late. It'll just get eaten alive by Lifestealer or Jug with Empower. So I, I, I think it's out of the question. I don't know what he actually goes for, though. He look, his quick buy says blink, but I I'm just not not for Necro this game. I think like the amount of damage that'll do relative to something like a Terror Blade with two or three items is just minimal. Although the R is pretty useful, maybe drums. I don't know, drums is just not very good right now, but it will help out the Terror Blade a lot. Yeah. Oh, Courier ends up going down, as it looks like Moon might be the one that gets found out here, and he just melts. There is no answer for that one. These are heroes that. They're, they're necessary casualties. You can't live in, if you just park yourself in base, you're not gonna get any farm. Someone has to die. Ideally your Pudra, I would say, or your Warlock. Actually, not even your Warlock, because you want your Warlock to get Midas. Maybe after Warlock gets Midas, you kind of sacrifice him now and then, but you need a hero just to die, just so you can open up the map, map a little bit more. And he actually has to buy back for this, which <laughs> is not ideal, but necessary for this point in the game, because they still do have the Ages and Life Stealer. So you're sacrificing a lot of net worth to not lose a set of racks, which, you know, you're literally buying time. So th this is something that I'm curious about then. For the Terror Blade, is he a hero that you can just completely carry the game as you can. for resolution? Yeah. So the, the goal, I guess, at the end of the day for, for DC is just farm up until uh, what's sort of that critical mass for him that he would need to achieve for uh, VTJ not to be able to really deal with them? Uh, there is no critical mass. It's just... You know, he just needs items. Yeah. Like, it's not like Manta Butterfly is going to be like, oh, my God, they can definitely fight right now. Or, like, Manta Scotty is going to be like, oh, my God, they can fight right now. It's more so, like, it's, it's not even that easy for a Terrible because if he, like, casts Conjure Image and then he has a Manta Illusion and then it's just cleaved down immediately by a Life Stealer, you're doing no damage. So he has to, like, set up a lot in the fights with spreading out his Illusions, maybe even spreading out his Mantas, not getting the RP Illusions clumped up. If, if his uh, Illusions clump up and get RP, they're also doing no damage. He's, like... I would say like 70% of the damage in their fights. Oh my god. Well, that's going to be the first one used and able to get out in the midst of it. Where was Freeze? Freeze was a little bit too far back. Maybe, I mean, he did have a Blink Dagger, so ROTK. Oh my I, god. I'm not really sure whether or not they were together. And now they know RP down and going for that small window. It looks like the Aegis has also expired. So looks like they are trying to either bait out Wii or 
go behind him and look for heroes that could potentially be killing him. This is the time. RP and Omni down and ready to move across the map. It does look like BGJ realizing something could be up. They are all going to back the hell out of the jungle. But this allows, you know, DC to get a little bit more map control for the moment, try and possibly get some D ward action in as well. But ROTK will show in mid. It's a Lincoln's pickup for Lifestealer. Not very common, but sometimes you'll see it versus Beastmaster. Seems like it could definitely be relevant. Maybe even at a certain point, uh, cast down on an ally to cancel out a Sunder. We might see some epic plays with that. Who knows? That would be sick. I think he's mostly worried about this member and uh, yeah. he, he might, let's see how selfish he is. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the other day we were watching, uh, was it Shadow who kept on Sundering yep. his teammates? Yep. It's like the best carry ever. A huge net worth lead and experience to overcome for VGJ right now. And it's feeling like they're making all the right moves consistently, backing up when they need to, moving out across the map with the Shadow Blade to try and find initiations. Yeah. What's the answer for DC, really? Farm Terror Blade. Yeah. That's it. I farmed Ember Spear, too, but Ember Spear is mostly there for control and a little bit of damage because of all this magic immunity. And, and because he can die super easily, and Terror Blade's there for the the majority of the damage. Normally you're like okay with Terrorblade being like like free farming. Ooh. Oh my god. Well another RP is they pull him back in the right clicks he is just gone. Again it's like you said not the biggest deal in the world but eventually these things are gonna start to build up to a sort of huge problem area for DC. Necessary sacrifices in yeah. the line of war. Poor Beastmaster. Poor Beastmaster. He doesn't uh, have buyback. How's he went for 20% experience gain, and he's actually almost level 15. So once he gets level 15, he can have his minus 35 second respawn timer. So he's the ideal target for them to RP, I think, uh, if you're DC. He's back before the cooldown comes off again. Ready to fight some more. Yep. But you can see just again the Terror Blade illusions constantly being spammed out and pushed back again. As it looks like Freeze has... well. Did you say that it was Lifestealer that went for the Lincolns? Because yep, Jug now. also has. So Pudge is next to useless uh, because Hook is kind of irrelevant. If, if you hook even a good target, you can just get Blink RP and or Blink Slaughter Sun, and they'll just jump on you there. So like, what is he actually supposed to do in the fight? Maybe save people with Hook? I guess, uh, maybe even? It feels to me like it's going to need to come off the back, like we said, of this Warlock Fatal Bonds and then like a Weeha big combo in to just deal the damage. Because right now they, they don't have it, uh, with the exception of if Terrorblade can get on top of somebody. But it's in the team fights. It feels like he's constantly been controlled. A really tough game for DC here. Very tough indeed. Oh, but not impossible. Looks like he went back for the Blink Dagger on Weeha. So... More of that mobility. Yeah, he, I think he got that second. The blink dagger is important so he can split push out the lanes. I think you want this to go long. Get a six slotted tear blade. Butterfly Manta, Scotty, plus two. Maybe even AC, I think, in this game. It's like BGG have kind of been pulled across the map, though. You can see, in spite of the dominant advantage they've got, they're still sort of losing out on these tar towers. How do you kind of put the nail in the coffin if you're them? Is it by virtue of a smoke gank, or do you need to just try and like pick up a, make sure that the wards are constantly off the map? You need to, you need to do a couple things. Firstly, you need to be able to take the Aegis. That's that's the, the, by far the easiest of the task, I think. Uh, secondly, you need to be able to stop these pit pushers. Like they almost tried with the kill on Wii, but because they didn't, DC's like. They're, they're encouraged to do so even more because they wasted two ultimates that didn't even get a weak kill. And I think Moon has the right idea. You you just put yourself out there, you know? You just put yourself out there, die, whatever. I'm back in minus 35 seconds of what my normal respawn timer would be. So he's level 15 right now. You know, he's going to be back in like 30 seconds or so, which is great. 30 seconds is not very long for a level 15, 16 hero. Yeah, and I love this play right here by Weeha. You see he's cutting the wave completely up here into the dire jungle. It's not often you're able to see that type of mobility pay off like this. And BTJ, they don't really have a great answer. They're just kind of being pulled across. And well, the rest of DC is kind of in their jungle now, ready for BTJ just in case they make a move. Yep. And if you actually look at the, uh, the last hits, TB is number one. However, you know, he is number three in net worth. But, I mean, he's still up there. And keep in mind that it's... 
been a very large net worth gap, but in terms of the actual damage dealing cores, yeah, he doesn't have Empower, but he still hits quite hard. Team net worth is only 18,000 in favor of VG. I say only. Only. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Terra Blade is one of those weird heroes that scales very well with items. You know Medusa, split shot, 80% times 5. You're like, oh man, each point of gold, it's like 400%. But I think Terra Blade's similar because of meta and Manta and Conjure Image. You can do, what, like probably 300, 400% with your illusions. And wow. sometimes that's even better than a Medusa because if you disable Medusa, she's not doing any damage. If you disable the main Terra Blade, his illusions are still crushing you. Man, look at this movement right now. They know exactly where Vichy J were. Moon Meander there to tank the gank. They all back out. They spotted it under the ward. Soxka called it out as well that that's where they were going to be going to. Weeha jumps out and away. The RP connects on to three, though. This could be big. They pull him back in. The huge combination comes out from Vichy J. And looking for more, it does look as if Weeha is going to be able to TP out. But that one hurt. That was a sick RP by ROTK. Crowd. Eyes on the prize, man. Uh, the crowd are definitely going wild now. They're feeling it. As, they uh, still didn't kill the Terrorblade and the Ember, though. Yeah, the cores stay alive. It, it was a little bit strange to me because it looked as if Sokka knew the exact route that they were going to take. Yeah. Their scan hit for a second on the left, and then they ended up still coming up the mid. So Yeah, I actually don't know what their plan was there. Maybe they were hoping for just a Slaughter Lifestealer that maybe, like, and that would have been okay but there were five heroes there, and they cannot fight five, five right now unless they're in their base with their shrines up. And that's a lot of ground to concede, another three deaths, and the gem lost yet again from the hands of DC. So how's Terrorblade doing? Terrorblade, almost butterfly. I think you buy out here if you're Terrorblade. Okay. I think you buy the quarter staff and the eagle horn, and you, you, you YOLO it. I mean, that's the, the one thing is that you do now have this moment where VGJ can kind of just pressure down mid, right? Like, is there anything else that they really need to be worried about as far as pushing out lanes? Like, no, not right now. Not after three people got wiped. But Terrorblade could potentially try and base base them on top, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think he does need to be able to buy his butterfly before this fight happens. But it looks like he is actually going to save his gold. And he has 3,900 upheaval. Going to try and slow him down a little. Ooh, that, that would have been real good for them because that's very deep. Yeah, that would have been a great hook indeed. And now well, he is going to be rooted now for the long duration. And the Terrorblade continuing to hit the damage on him. But ROTK with this long-range initiation might see some magic here in just a second. Four staff as well as blink available. They've got vision. They break the Lincolns again. Fatal Bonds doesn't quite connect. The Crush is there as well. They drop the Rock, though, onto five. Fatal Bonds is on a lot of creeps, though, not onto a ton of heroes. The buyback immediately from Ember. And Shrine going, looking for another hook. Off the mark, they can't quite get it. Crush now onto Misery. They're kind of grouped up. They need to be careful. RP connects onto two. They take him down as well. Pudge buys back, but that's already going to be Warlock on. They need to jump back into this one. Resolution in the meantime, though, is just hitting away onto all of these heroes. Haven't been able to bring down anybody of BGJ yet. Maybe now they'll be able to take down the life seal. We'll see if he's going to be able to infest into anybody. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. Oh, my God. The Fatal Bonds killed Magnus and Witchhawker in the back. Oh my god, that is so much damage. And yeah. still trying to get out in a way they aren't going to be able to take down a Moon Meander for the moment. And it looks like they actually are going to be able to control and take down that Life Stealer. So it's just too much damage thrown there into the Life Stealer. That was not the best RP from ROTK. He got, what, the Warlock and plus one? Warlock and Pudge, I think. And Rezo did a really good job of positioning himself away from all those heroes. He has completed his butterfly now. It took a wee buyback, but still, the shrugs are intact. They get a huge kill on the Life Stealer. Ended up being 1,000 gold going the way of Wii, so that's pretty much his uh, you know, buyback money and then some. And of course, a ton of experience, which Ooh. I think is very important in this game considering how starved they've been for the majority. So after that, net worth looks like 25,000 in favor of DC, or sorry, in favor of VG, but as you can tell, like, net worth is not the most important thing in the world. If you can't break the base, your net worth is kind of irrelevant. And this is a DD Terrorblade going up, still 50 seconds away from Metamorphosis, but it's a lot of damage, and, well, they don't have Magnus back for another couple of seconds. They won't be able to force the buyback. They would love to be able to get Lifesteal's buyback right now, but that's asking for too much. Yeah. But Aegis down.
they do end up losing at least the tier three tower. Did they also lose the racks there in the mid lane? No. So they did not. Melee's hold strong. Uh, they might try and go again right now because they know they still have a net worth, uh, huge net worth advantage. If they have a slightly better RP on, let's say, three heroes or two heroes, including one of Terror Blade or Wii, or if they get Wii beforehand because he doesn't have buyback right now, it could be game over for them. So yeah. I think it's a good point. Now, like, DC's actually starting to get some items too. They have like the Ghost Scepter on the Warlock, and Life Stealer's actually too farmed to even get a Defusal because he needs better items than his other slots. Yeah, it's sort of a rough time. They also bought back, I believe, on Misery and Warlock. So we don't have a ton of buybacks on the Radiant side. They needed them to hold last time. We'll see if it's going to be the same story here. It does look like the split push is still going along the top lane. And maybe a bots play in could be something else to pull the attention away from BGJ. They have one buyback on the Radiant side, and that is Resolution. So he's the only one that can die with and be back in the fight soon. So no ages on side of Vici. A very dangerous point in the game right now for both teams. And Warlock also picked up the Ghost Scepter. You've got the full completed Mjolnir now on the Ember as well. And it looks like they might think about going towards Shrines. Uh, could be a nice little middle ground as opposed to trying to force the engagement into what could be a bit of a tough situation for them. They're approaching six slots on their cores. A juggernaut, six items. Life Stealer, six items. I guess he doesn't have, he doesn't have Abyssal completed, but they're getting to that point where they're actually starting to level out in terms of uh, their damage output. Man, a constant split push from Wii is... Oh, he's going for Scythe. This is more of a that is going to be very, very bad for Wii. If Wii can just get Blink, Force Stabbed, and uh, Scythe and just die in one second easily. So we, I don't actually know how you deal with this. He doesn't even have a Lincoln, so you don't even need the Force Step to pop out. I, I assumed he had Lincolns, or else he would need to cast Force Step first. But um, yeah, pretty much uh, not, not, that split pushing is not going to be an alternative for him very soon. Yeah, and they don't have like that, like we mentioned, either the Dazzle, or we also have Moon who's going back for a Solar Crest, I believe, at this point. Solar Crest is good. Um, it could actually be Heaven's Halberd, I guess. Uh, we'll know when we eventually see. It does look like they're setting up now onto Freeze. We mentioned the Lincoln Sphere. They are going to break it. Roar does come out. Counter initiation play, though. They find it onto two. Will they be able to make anything of this? The Rock has also dropped. Now Moon Meander going to drop here as the right clicks come in from Freeze. Well, maybe not. The slow is enough. He's trying to walk back out and away. Able to blink out and, well, also the Ghost Scepter. They cancel the RP from Sox. They realize that he's just going to drop. So they don't end up losing Moon, but they do lose that Warlock for 60 seconds and no Golem. If Rock is down, this is a very good time to push. Even if Warlock were alive, they still would be completely okay with that. We see a TP to the Shrine from the Life Stealer looking like he wants to push out the mid lane, but that is going to be troublesome if they actually want to continue this push down the bottom. I wonder if DC maybe even realized this and could think about going for it on the bottom lane, but yeah, it's, it's so scary to even move out anywhere. They like, don't have Roar either. Like, how are you going to jump people? Yeah. Well, 40 minutes in, certainly it's been Vici J, the one setting the tempo and continuing to dominate this DC lineup. Uh, are, are you feeling like there is sort of a swing back into DC's way at all, or is Only this Only if just they too hold much? high ground like they did the last time by killing three of the heroes when they had the Aegis. It's, it's definitely possible. It's just it's, it's just really hard to ask for. Weeha doing his bestest to make it happen as he's hitting the tier three tower in the top lane, but will be pulled back now because Vici J, they're ready to finish off what they started. They actually need a Lotus on the Radiant side too. Uh, probably Beastmaster's item that he needs to be able to deal with the Scythe. That Scythe is it, it's a nightmare. If you're a Wii and you see that, you know you're gonna be, you're gonna be in some big trouble. All the melee barracks fallen, and it, it's just so hard to initiate here. They end up glyphing, comes out a little bit on the later side, and could pull back in one with the hook, but manages to hit the Terra Blade Illusion instead. Nice and clean, one Rex for Vici. We don't have MKB up yet on the Life Stealer. So that might be one way in which this Terra Blade with the butterfly can stay alive in these fights. Possibly. Also do have the Warlock with the casual buckler. Not often that you see that. I think it's worth to upgrade it all the way to the Guardian Greaves or? Well, I mean, way too late. I, I would just get minus over him. 40 minutes in, screw it. You know if you're going to win, it's going to be like 65, 70. Greaves is minimal. I don't think that like the, what, 15 extra armor and 
250, 300 HP is really going to help you survive in these fights. Whereas later on down the line, being able to farm like Lotus, Glimmer, Force Staff, Refresher, like these items are going to be able to make a big difference in the fights. But I don't even think he's going to have the, really the luxury to choose because he, I just saw him buy a ton of support items. Ooh, Daedalus, that's bold. Yeah, that's real bold. And all the illusions getting crit, everything. It's going to be a ton of damage. Not Looks sure. like Daedalus making a swing back now after uh, Bloodthorn been nerfed. Usually you see Bloodthorn, especially versus Lifestealer and Jug. Uh, but yeah, Daedalus just for pure raw damage output. Well, Roshan does go up and they realize this is happening. Do VGJ realize that this is up? They could move in for it, potentially. Oh, uh, they smoke. Look. Let's see. Freeze is out in front. It's dead. It's already down. They were going to be able to pick it up. Soxka is the one that ends up taking Oh, excuse me. Resolution is. They're looking for the RP. Is maybe going to be able to take him down. Freeze already there, but the rock has dropped. Fenrir taking a lot of damage. They get the Sunder off. Turning to fight. Omni Slash is there. He's also hexed. So he is going to go down. Freeze in the meantime. Spinning away. Weeha is on the chase. It looks like the crush comes out onto the pullback in. Uh, RP not going to quite get used. And Weeha still controlling. Not able will kill off Freeze as of yet. He does get that Trine on. Trine run out of the way. Eats the cheese, but will be contained. Shane's barely saving his life there. They've only lost the Warlock as of yet. Everybody very low. ROTK trying to run away in the crutch. That's going to be enough to take down Resolution. Misery and Weeha need to get out of here before things get worse. Oh, Healing Ward so strong there. Very well played by Freeze to not die. He went in. Like, he thought ROTK was going in, but he went in and then just immediately blinked out, so that was pretty scary. Uh-oh. Well, that's going to be a kill onto Weeha, and he's immediately going to need to buy back. Still 50 seconds with no Terra Blade. The burst that came out onto Terra Blade was just a little bit too much to deal with, and another crush. They pull back in for a moment, the Slardar, and going to be able to contain him with Misery. Is it enough, though? The damage from Freeze is just so tremendous. No way to stop it. Four down, two minutes with no Weeha. And I think that VGJ might have just done it. Well, yeah. The Pudge has been next to useless in this game based on VG's draft. There's just no good hook targets. ROTK delivered on a couple RPs when it mattered the most. And now they're cleaning up the last Rex. Melee. Rex. Range Rex. Mega Creeps. Impending. It feels to me as this, this game is pretty much been decided for a while. There were avenues for them to get back into it, but really hard to imagine it coming back at anything at this point as the Lotus Orb just reflects all of the spells in the world. They're Rezo. turning. They're just going to keep on going. Wicked Six Streak trying to take them down. Freeze showing no mercy onto the illusions, trying to kill them off. Two are dead. I mean, they're mega creeped at this point. Slaughter is way too strong, too. Slaughter has so many items in this game. I mean, they're holding on. Apparently, they still believe. ROTK, huh? RP onto one. A couple more right clicks there. Going to be able to take down that Warlock, and good game does finally get called. Good game well played. Well, Overall, okay. their lanes were a little bit better, and they did not get enough mileage out of the Ember Spirit Pudge. That's yeah. two heavy picks for them to commit, and like, Searing Chains hook happened never, because you never really want to do it on the target. Like, the one time they hooked Leipzig, you just turned around and destroyed them. But very solid draft and play. ROTK, this was, you know, we've seen two phases of ROTK. This was definitely one of the better ones. Yeah, definitely. It was a pretty impressive display from the entire team. And, you know, it felt to me as if the draft just as a whole didn't allow DC to do what they wanted to accomplish. I think the early game also was way different. You don't see the Iron Talon very much anymore. Uh, uh, a hero starting off Iron Talon level one. And they, they did that and put FY in the offlane, which I think kind of threw them off because... Like, Pudge would be very good at dealing with the Magnus in offlane, but, like, if your Slaughter dies a couple times, it's like, eh, yeah, whatever, yeah. who cares? But Magnus got the blink that he did at a good timing because of their laning, laning decisions. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us for game number one. Hopping into game number two next.
Ben, how are you feeling about it? Do you think that DC have what it takes to pull it back to a game number three? I don't know. I still have it in my mind. Don't get RP. Don't get RP. <laughs> That's what's going on through their head in the like, last 30 minutes of the so game. You're saying you that they've been like, mentally scarred by this first game a little bit. I wouldn't say scarred. It's just they didn't have the team fight to deal with the RP. Like, okay. They got two man RP'd a lot on like unimportant heroes, and they still lost the fight a lot of the time. But yeah. you know the cores are just living and duh, duh, I can't get RP'd. <laughs> it's, it's awful. It's just, you know, it's just not something that you want to deal with. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks again everybody for tuning in we're gonna go a quick commercial break and then we'll be back with game number two see you guys then gaming vets online